So we're going to show you some artificial intelligence in a search engine and how it's going to impact some healthcare. I'm very All interested. Right. So what I'm going to show you, what I'm going to show you right here is, let's see here. So before, before I go into this, I want you to envision for a moment that you are just a normal dude and you're going to go into Google and you're going to pose a question uh, about medical something or other that impacts you. So Connor, what is something that you maybe asked Google in the, you know, in recent years, uh, you know, like, oh my gosh, what is this bump on my elbow? What does this mean? Right. You know, and then you go to WebMD. So what's something that you may have asked Google as I'm just a normal guy? Uh, one of them was a foot thing. I'm going to save you guys the Let's trouble. Let's skip the of, foot thing. Yeah, we'll skip that. Uh, another one is, um, why are my bruises not healing super fast? Why are my bruises not healing super fast? I feel like my, my bruises fast. are taking longer to heal. Hmm. Let's see here. Why are my, that's a good one, though. I mean, that's a, that's a good question. Okay, ready? So here we go. I'm going to do a quick share. So here we go. On the left here, if you guys are listening on the podcast, I will be as descriptive as I possibly can. We've got a screen up here on the left. This is the new Bing with the chat GPT integration into it. On the right is Google, just normal Google, right? Uh, I was Googling about hangovers. Sorry about that. <laughs> so I don't have a hangover. That was a question that was posed to me and I was trying to show an oh, example. Oh, sure, Devin, Anyways. sure. Your yeah, story, sure. tell it any Everyone you focus, want. please. We're, we're getting focused here. This is a professional podcast, <laughs> This everybody. is a professional podcast, right? Okay, so we're going to ask Bing the question that you've asked, right? The same thing like we would do Google. But let's start with Google because we, we're used to this. We know what so, it's going to look um, like, yeah. So how would you type this into Google? So you're saying, why are my bruises not healing quickly? Yeah, I feel like my bruises just take longer to heal. I fell uh, so you at might a hockey say tournament, bruises. and I fell, and it's not healed yet, and it really hurts. <laughs> okay, so you might say um, bruises take longer to heal, right? Because that's how we search mm -hmm. in Google. We use keywords. Um, so let's see here. We got Cleveland Clinic. There's more blood for your body to clear out, so it takes more time. Bruises last one to three weeks on average. Then it says people are asking... Can bruises take a long time to come out? Can bruises take longer than two weeks to heal? Then there's more on Cleveland Clinic, Alberta bruises, care instructions. And as we're going through this, we really have to decide what is going to answer our question, our query. Sure. So I, I don't, I'm not the subject matter expert. I'm just a normal guy. I want to know about my bruises. So um, let's ask Bing, the smart Bing. So, but we're going to use a full sentence. Okay. So can we give it a little bit of context and, and be specific about what your ask is? So you're saying, um, I was playing sports and got a bruise. It is taking longer to heal than normal. Why? Is that accurate? Yeah, that's about yeah. right. That's 100% happened. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to hit search. Now what it's doing is I'm in the chat GPT search engine, right? With Bing, the integration. So it's going to do a quick search and now it's going to respond to me. And the first thing it says one out of 10. All right. So I get 10 back and forth questions with this search engine. Now, mm -hmm. the first thing it says is there could be several reasons why a bruise takes longer to heal than normal. Some people bruise more easily than others and their bruisers can take longer to heal. Causes include age, medications, uh, vesiculitis. A bruise could also normally heal within a week to 10 days, but if it doesn't, there may be something going on. Then it asks me a question. Have you been taking any medication or have you had any other symptoms? I am now being assessed. Wow. We have now begun a conversation, right? So I can now respond. It's given me some options on the bottom, it says, I can just click on it. It says, no, I haven't taken any medication. So I can just click to respond automatically or I can answer. So Connor, let's do this with you. What is your response to the AI bot now? Uh, I have not been taking medication. So I haven't, okay. And, and this bruise is taking longer than normal. Yeah, it has heal. been about four weeks. Okay, four weeks. I'm going to tell it. Where's the bruise? 
That's on my elbow here. <laughs> the bruise <laughs> is on my elbow. Does that matter? And also, why don't you go ahead and show this nurse, this critical care nurse, your elbow uh, he while you've got there. him on the chat. <laughs> he was playing in the game with you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so should I be more clear? Um, a nurse hit me <laughs> on the elbow. What do I do? He knew exactly where to strike me, so the bruise just would last just forever. Just right underneath the funny right bone right there. here. <laughs> on the funny bone, and it wasn't yeah, funny. Perfect. Okay, no. so. Now the chat is now saying it typically takes two to four weeks for a bruised elbow to completely heal. It goes into uh, some more information about if I've been putting stress. So, Connor, if you've been putting stress on your elbow, don't do that. Then it says if you're concerned, then it'd be a good idea to check with your doctor who might want to take an x-ray to see if there's evidence of a fracture. This is extremely detailed. Mm -hmm. And it is not producing for you ads sponsored ads you're not having to sift through links but at the bottom of each one of these responses to your query we actually have some links to learn more um i see i've got healthline um i've got newhealthadvisor.com i've got uh, cleveland clinic and so i can that's an amalgamation of a lot of the links we see on the right there from google that's right because what the ai bot is doing is it is searching the web and using its collective knowledge to provide you the answer, not a list of links for you to figure out if one of those is your answer. And I can actually see a, a, a challenge that the normal person faces in healthcare when trying to figure out what's going on with them and if they should go to the doctor and go see Luke, right? Because they're going to search in Google today and they're going to pick the answer that best suits them. The one that not only is hopefully true, but that, that makes them feel the most comfortable. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, it's like, oh, option number five says that I'm probably okay. That's the answer I choose. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Versus an AI bot giving you some information saying, look, this is what you should watch out for. It's almost like calling your on-call nurse, at your triage nurse, and, and you're getting triage now by a search engine. That is a whole new world for us. Now, let's go back over here to Google. I The second question, my bruises take longer, right? So let's say I go back into Google and I use one of these search queries that we've done, the follow-up, which is I have not been taking medications, the bruises take longer to heal. I'm just going to copy half of that prompt, put it into the search engine, and it doesn't know what I'm talking about. Wow, that's quite interesting. Again, I get more links about mm -hmm. bruises. And a lot of these are actually repeat links, but Google doesn't know from previous search to this new search that these are connected. I'm the same person asking a follow-up question on this. And that is extremely powerful for, I think, healthcare as like the civilian population and their access yeah. to medical information that is accurate, vetted. And also it's not claiming to be the only answer. It is saying, here's what I think mm -hmm. is probably the most likely, if you're still concerned, you should call your doctor because here's what they might want to do. They might want to get an x-ray. That is super helpful. Um, I would be very interested in your response, Luke, because you've never seen that before. So what does that make you think of as a frontline healthcare person? I, I mean, you know, that situation of what you just went through with the Bing search there is probably something that happens to me once a week where I have friends or people ask me or like, Oh, you're a nurse. Like, what do you think? Or, and again, going through the whole situation and being able to ask one question and then get a response and then ask another question in still, you know, having the details from the first one. I mean, that is, that is huge. That's, you know, in a conversation with memory from what your previous, you know, queries or your previous messages 100 percent. i mean that's that, that's textbook for just like you know like you said triaging and probably what the ed nurses do you know i don't sadly i'm not an ed nurse haven't you know worked in that field but i'm sure that's exactly how those conversations go or you know i would say it's very similar probably to what and how those conversations go. i used to work oh yeah 
in the ED and immediately, yeah, I work in the, yeah. And so immediately most of the questions go right to the critical acute problems that you might happen. It's like, Oh, does it radiate anywhere else? Do you have any pain in your jaw? How are you on blood thinners? Are you bleeding anywhere? What's your blood pressure like? Is there anything I need to solve right now? Cause if not, we're just going to basically send you to the, the doctor who's going to look at you and maybe admit, you yeah, yeah. Not. this is an emergency mm-hmm. department. Here's what I love about this. Um, Connor, would you go to the emergency department now that you've had a conversation with this chat AI bot Bing, or would you call your PCP? Probably or would not. You do nothing. Honestly, right? probably not. If I would probably just you know I'd get that kind of peace of mind of you know it takes you know two to four weeks or whatever it could right an understanding you know, it could bug you more if you're putting more stress on it and then I'd kind of take that and be like oh, okay I'm fine then I'll just give it a, another week or so if it gets really bad in the next week or so then may, then I might go into the ED or something. Well, and I want to stress, it's not just, it's not telling you you're fine. Mm -hmm. It's telling you, you know, here are things that might make it continue to stay bruised. And now you have information to go, well, I should probably stop putting stress on this and then ask again in (laughs) two weeks. Yeah. Right. That's probably, maybe you should not play hockey for two weeks or something like that. Right. Just, just coach for two weeks. But he's like, no, forget (laughs) that. I'm going to play hockey. So this bruise is getting, this bruise is getting bigger chat. Thanks a lot. (laughs) But no, it's it's me um, making me inferring what the information that they're giving me. So I'm making yeah. a conscious decision to yes. I'm probably fine. They're not saying, you know, you're good. You don't need to go to the doctor. It's, it's informing me. you. Right. You make the informed decision instead of here's a list of links. You pick the one you like most. Because if I ask WebMD that, they tell me that I have cancer and I'm going to die in two weeks. Yeah. I oh Man, those <laughs> WebMD pages where it has to run through the gamut. And the problem is, is that the signs and symptoms of any disease ultimately could potentially possibly be death. You don't know. <laughs> it's like, oh, I have the chicken pox. What does this mean? Well, one guy died once of chicken pox. So it could be death, but probably not. Yeah, no. <laughs> and speaking from a nurse's perspective, at any time, any patient can become critical and get to the point where they need life-saving measures. And, you know, and, right. and you know, coming back to the whole simulation and bridging that gap of, being able to simulate a day as a nurse and going through those mental, you know, the mental processes and then having a patient crash on you, you know, and not knowing which one, because that's, I mean, that's my life. I walk in every day, not knowing is this patient going to, you know, crash on me by the end of the shift or are we going to make it through for the 12 hours and not have an issue the whole day? Never know. And I dream of a day, I dream of a day where patients come to the emergency department to be triaged a second time. Right. Not coming. Not the day where that's today. People come to the emergency department because they're like, I don't know. You should know. Please tell me what's wrong with me. Only to find out 90 percent of the time you actually don't need to be right. here. I, I worked I worked with a nurse um, who was very blunt and uh, in the emergency department. And the way that they started their assessment question was so unique when a patient first hit the bed. Right. So the patient would come in through triage, they'd go into their bed, little curtain, I'm getting them on the vitals, I'm getting their IV in it as the paramedic there, right? And the nurse walks in and says, actually, it could have been the doctor now that I think about it. It might have been the physician. But anyways, the healthcare provider walks in to the patient and says, what is your emergency today? Which is a whole different way to frame the question, Mm -hmm. right? And the, the patient, it always made the patients pause. If they probably didn't need to be there, right? But the patients who absolutely needed to be there, it was obvious, Mm -hmm. right? And they would 100% come out the gate with like, here's my emergency. What is my emergency emergency today? And they would hold up a stump and be like, this is my emergency (laughs) today. (laughs) And truthfully, they probably wouldn't even be asking it maybe nine times out of 10. They're like, well, we know why you're here, you know? It's like, yeah, and it's not, right. And it's not to, uh, um, it's not to be disrespectful. It's to, to point out that this is, in fact, an emergency department. And if you think about what my emergency is today, you know, you might, you might do things differently. However, Google is not helping get people or preventing people from going to the emergency department unnecessarily, right? It's actually sending more people into the emergency department because they are WebMDing everything and they should <laughs> stop. They're WebMD expert patients. Um, all right. So I think we have gone quite on a long time and thank you so much, Luke. So my pleasure. Thank you guys the... for having me. I really appreciate it. Hey, Connor, you ever think of the artistry in Van Gogh's starry night or Picasso's masterpieces? Oh yeah. 
the way they've captured their imagination and put it to canvas, remarkable. Exactly. Now, VR patients' latest upgrade is like handing nurses and paramedics that same brush. The Infusions authoring tool lets them craft immersive medical simulations, much like an artist paints a vision. Author basic to critical care simulations with real infusions, meaning not just 3D models, but the IV bags actually drain in real time. A VR calculator, a programmable smart pump, and so much more. So educators can become the Van Gogh of medical simulations. Precisely. And the best part, what they author is their own masterpiece, their intellectual property. It's like going from a paint-by-numbers coloring book to true artistry in immersive medical simulation. Discover your palette at vrpatients.com. Author, assign, and grade only at vrpatients.com.